Yellowstone supervolcano hotspot. Discovery of ancient super eruptions indicate that this hotspot may be waning. This is what a new study is showing us. Now we know that the mantle plume that feeds Yellowstone comes from Baja, California. It, uh, the, it looks like a Y. The western part goes and uh, has magma feeding under the San Andreas Fault and the Walker Lane Fault System. Walker Lane Fault System housing the high threat volcanoes of California, one of them being the Long Valley Caldera Supervolcano. And that's where we've been having a tremendous amount of earthquakes east of that in, in, in Nevada, in the volcanic field of Nevada. And uh, shaking Long Valley quite daily, almost daily. And the eastern part goes up towards Utah under Salt Lake City and uh, feeding those volcanoes there, going up into Yellowstone, then turning west and feeding the Idaho area. And that's where we've been having the quake swarms daily since the March 18, 7.5 earthquake in Salt Lake City, Utah, and the 6.5 magnitude earthquake just north of Boise, Idaho, in the Idaho volcanic area. And that's just along the fault line and under the, uh, it's uh, being fed by the mantle plume feeding this area, which includes Yellowstone supervolcano. Now, about this hot spot, Boulder, Colorado, USA, throughout Earth's long history, volcanic super eruptions have, some, have been some of the most extreme events to affect our planet's surface. And surprisingly, even though these explosions eject enormous volumes of material, at least 1,000 times more than the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens volcano, and have the potential to alter the planet's climate, causing a volcanic winter, ice ages even. Relatively few, few have been documented in the geologic record. Now a study published by in uh, the uh, journal Geology, researchers have announced the discovery of two newly identified super eruptions associated with Yellowstone hotspot track super eruptions of the super volcano, including what they believe was the volcanic province's largest and most cataclysmic event. The result shows the hotspot, which today fuels the geysers and mud pots and fumaroles in Yellowstone National Park, may be waning in intensity. The team used a combination of techniques. It included bulk chemistry, magnetic data, and radioisotopic dates and they correlated volcanic deposits scattered across tens of thousands of square kilometers. They said, we discovered that deposits previously belonging to multiple smaller eruptions were in fact huge colossal sheets of volcanic material from two previously unknown super eruptions, and they took place about 9 million and 8.7 million years ago. This is what Thomas Knott said. He's a volcanologist at the University of Leicester and the paper's lead author. He says the younger of the two, the Gray's Landing super eruption, is now the largest recorded event of the entire Snake River Yellowstone volcanic province. He says based on the most recent coll uh, collations of super eruption sizes, it is one of the top five eruptions of all time. The team says, uh, which also included researchers from the British Geological Survey and University of California, Santa Cruz, estimate that Grace Landing super eruption was 30% larger than the previous record holding the well-known Huckleberry Ridge Tuff, and it had devastated local and global effects, devastating effects globally as well. The Grace Landing eruption enameled an area, enamel make it, made it all full of glass, an area the size of New Jersey in searing hot volcanic glass that instantly sterilized the land surface. Not explains that anything located within this region would have been buried and most likely vaporized during the eruption. Particulates would have choked the stratosphere, raining fine ash over the entire United States and encompassing gradually the whole Earth. Both of the new discovered super eruptions occurred during the Miocene, an interval of geologic time about 23 to 5.3 million years ago. These two new eruptions bring the total number 
of recorded Miocene super eruptions at the Yellowstone Snake River volcanic province to six. This means that the recurrence rate of Yellowstone hotspot super eruptions during the Miocene age was on average once every 500,000 years. By comparison, not says, two super eruptions have so far taken place in what is now Yellowstone National Park during the past three million years. It's therefore seeming that the Yellowstone hotspot has experienced the threefold decrease in its capacity to produce super eruption events. This is a very significant decline, he says. These findings have little bearing on assessing the risk of another super eruption occurring today in Yellowstone. Not says we have demonstrated that the recurrence rate of Yellowstone super eruption appears to be at once every 1.5 million years. The last super eruption was 630,000 years ago, suggesting we may have up to 900,000 years before another super eruption of this type uh, occurs. But this estimate, he says, is far from exact. He emphasizes that continuous monitoring of the region, which is being conducted by U.S. Geological Survey Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, is a must, and that warnings of any uptick in activity would be issued well in advance, of course. The study builds on decades of contributions by many other researchers. It grew out of a large, larger project investigating the productivity of major continental volcanic provinces. Those with super eruptions are the result of colossal degrees of crustal melting over prolonged periods of time, and therefore, not says, have a profound impact on the structure and composition of Earth's crust in the regions where they occur. Because studying these provinces is vital to understanding their role in shaping our planet's crustal processes. He says he hopes he, that this research foreshadows even more revelations. He's hope, he says we hope the methods, uh, we hope the methods and findings uh, will, uh, of course, uh, reveal what could happen in the future. Okay, this is from Bended Reality from the uh, U.S. Geological Survey. Geological Society of America. Now, as a matter of information, since that 640,000 year ago erup super eruption, uh, we've had a lava eruption in Yellowstone 70,000 years ago, and another 80 eruptions since then. And it, Yellowstone is considered to be the second largest supervolcano of the world, although we're finding another supervolcano type of thing in around the area of uh, the eastern seaboard around Quebec. Another one, they say, is under Antarctica. Anyway, it's, Yellowstone is considered to be one of the 20 supervolcanoes of the world. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.